Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. A black hole seems like the stuff of myth. They're mysterious monsters that consume everything in reach, including light. They're so dense that they distort space-time to such a degree that the invisible fabric warps into an inescapable whirlpool that only ends in cosmic death and transformation for anything caught in the current. A black hole is like a breakdown of space itself. It's like the universe has encountered something so heavy and dense that the entire cosmos just can't hang on and the object slips away. The point of no escape from a black hole lies inside of a minimum safe distance referred to by cosmologists as the event horizon. Once you get too close, once you cross the event horizon line, the black hole has got you. Even if you're a photon of light traveling as fast as you can, once you're within grasp of the black hole within the event horizon, it's impossible to get away. All the energy and speed in the world isn't going to be enough to escape. With black holes, there's a simple rule. Don't go near them, and by near, I mean like a billion miles. There was one man who was absolutely critical in the development of our understanding of black holes. Stephen Hawking is one of the very few actual scientists in the modern era that anyone has ever heard of. The guy with the bow tie doesn't count. No scientist or technical person in the world takes that man seriously, especially me. However, Stephen Hawking was more than the real deal. He was a creative genius, somehow able to open and push his mind and imagination to conceptualize and mathematically model something that no one had ever seen and some people didn't even believe existed. What Hawking accomplished intellectually was just about supernatural. His insights remind me a lot of what Albert Einstein did with relativity. One man became someone who taught us more than billions who came before him. Despite his physical challenges, Hawking was an outstanding writer and communicator, outlining a lot of his ideas in the classic book and documentary, A Brief History of Time. That book was probably the main inspiration for more than half of the physicists working today. He described the origin of black holes. Basically, these things form when all hell is breaking loose in the universe. They're generally born from the collapse of massive stars. Hawking also figured out that black holes are not forever. These monsters are just like us. They have a birth, they age, and eventually die and evaporate into empty space. The story of the life of a black hole is definitely a dramatic one and controversial among physicists who couldn't imagine how a black hole could ever just vanish. If it's sucking everything in, shouldn't a black hole always be gaining mass, getting bigger and bigger? The idea that a black hole could be shrinking and disappearing like an aging animal seemed to defy the very concept of what a black hole is. He also determined something else very counterintuitive about black holes. They're not black at all. They're glowing, emitting something now referred to as Hawking radiation. So how was Stephen Hawking wrong about black holes? To be perfectly clear, he was both right and wrong, but probably more correct than incorrect. He proved these dark monsters weren't actually dark, that they were glowing a special kind of radiation, which in effect slowly drained them of life. Hawking radiation was the key puzzle piece behind figuring out what was actually killing black holes. How was Hawking radiation getting away? How is this food escaping the event horizon? If a black hole is basically defined as something matter and even light can't escape, what's going on here? Why does a black hole glow? Why is Hawking radiation special and able to escape the worst cosmic grip? Hawking explained this radiation was a mixture of particles and light, that the intense force of gravity in the black hole was splitting light and matter into opposing bits that went off in separate directions. 
some escaping. This is where the problem with his theory rested. He insisted that the force of the black hole was splitting matter and light photons into particle and antiparticle pairs. He claimed that the particle with positive energy would escape the black hole, while its antimatter counterpart with negative energy would fall inside and take the plunge. The black hole eventually dies and disappears from accumulating negative energy. The positive energy, the escaping bits, were what he defined as Hawking radiation. There is a big problem with his description. First of all, Hawking radiation is actually pure light. No particles like electrons, neutrons, or protons. The only thing making up Hawking radiation are photons of light. The conventional particles he thought would be there weren't and aren't. The second issue is, if he was right about the way Hawking radiation is created, only the event horizon should glow. Astronomers actually observe a more diffuse, faint glow that spans beyond the edge. The third problem is the light from Hawking radiation is too red. The photons are too soft and low energy. If Hawking had this right, this light would rip the universe in half. So what's actually happening? What's the real story behind the birth of Hawking radiation? The most accepted theory these days isn't any less fascinating as what Hawking described. This seems to be about gravity. It starts with the observation that any massive object warps space itself to some degree. The more massive the object, the more the warpage of space-time. Einstein conceptualized it as a heavy ball being supported by a thin sheet of fabric. This bending of space effect is seen in all kinds of astronomical measurements. Something as heavy and massive as a black hole really pulls on the space surrounding it, creating a steep trench. What could be happening next is described in depth in my previous episode, Quantum Tunnel. This is one of the most tested and well-accepted parts of quantum mechanics. As weird as this is, it seems to be true. Light and particles can and do occasionally teleport across physical barriers. It's not very much light that tunnels through, it's just a faint trickle. The light making up Hawking radiation is light that has tunneled through the event horizon. It's light that has ended up somehow on the other side of this gravity hill created by the black hole. This same effect is exploited in all kinds of electronic and optical devices. It's a real thing. When a black hole gobbles things up, a lot of energy, a lot of light is created. Some of this light inevitably tunnels through this steep gravity wall, through the event horizon, to the other side where it's safe. Hawking radiation isn't really light that escaped the black hole, it's light that cheated its way out. The really interesting part of all this to me is that Hawking didn't always make this mistake. In his scientific articles meant for his peers, he actually got this right. He only seemed to get things wrong when he was trying to dumb it down for the public. This whole quantum tunneling, twisted space-time thing is confusing, and maybe he didn't want to disturb people too much and turn them off to studying and learning about this stuff. Sometimes, to understand these things, one has to be comfortable with confusion. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium. Thank you.